it's a nice thing to have the input of nine schools thinking very, very, very hard about how it is that you should educate young men to play their part in society. And I think, if you look back, they've done pretty well. I found it entrancing that you had this great diversity and a sense of belonging to a diverse structure. I'm very, very proud to have been a small part of that. The biggest things was that you're allowed to be ambitious. What I learned here was that ambition was acceptable. And I think that's really something that's right behind the GPS spirit, is that it encourages those things, the diversity and cohesiveness, but also ambition. Both ambition on the fields of sport, but an ambition in life. Well, I think one of the great things about GPS sport is not necessarily about first 15s or 16As, it's about the Cs, the Ds, the Es. It's about enjoying yourself, competition, participation, all that sort of stuff. GPS sport and BTS sport wouldn't exist without, in my view, without the help of parents. Oh, no doubt. And as you say, none of this would happen without the wider community. And you've got your players on the field and coaches who are generally teachers, volunteers, manning the barbecue. All those things are what contribute to that sense of community and that that's um, what makes GPS sport so special. It doesn't matter what team you're in or whatever you do, it's the effort you put in with your teammates and the winning will look after itself. My father and uncle are old boys here, and my two brothers are current BBC students, so this place has always been more than just a school to me. When we run onto the sporting field, when we solve a problem in class, when we help our peers, and when we sport our boaters, we represent BBC and celebrate the GPS spirit. We know that the memories of our GPS story will stay with us long after we walk outside these college gates, and will be continued by BBC boys and students from other schools across Queensland. It is an honour to stand beside old collegians, past and present brothers, fathers and grandfathers and mates from other schools as we celebrate what it truly means to be a part of the 100 year strong GPS community. Seeing the passion and pride in the faces of old collegians reminds us what a privilege it is and part of an association steeped in sporting tradition and cultural history. Three, two, one. <laughs> I think probably one of the things within GPS is the levels of support that you get. And that, um, in a school, you don't have to be the best. I think you, you can turn up within the GPS and be a part of something that's great. And you don't have to be the, be the one on the field. The fan actually is really heavily involved and engaged in the sport uh, and within the GPS system itself. It's kind of been an honour to be the 100 year skill captain because there's been many celebrations and many actions of the GPS schools actually coming together to celebrate this big event. You're all playing at a high level and you're all, you're all there because you've earned it. So everyone on the field and off the field respect each other. And if you see them outside of it, you're mates with them because you've got that common brotherhood in the GPS association. There's something special about, about the GPS system. Uh, I think it stems back to the GPS competition uh, and you spend you know, a good part of that part of your life uh, competing against these guys. Uh, and some of my best friends through medicine are actually guys from other GPS schools. So I think it, uh, it binds you together in a way. Uh, and it's not necessarily just churchy old boys, but old boys from any GPS school. You have that, that common experience. It could even be in the form of coming back to coach or to help out around the school. And there's a lot of opportunity to come back to, to help mentor uh, younger old boys or to get involved with, and they're keen to see younger old boys succeed. And so it was reassuring to go out into the world knowing that you know there's a huge network of old boys that have your back.
We'd go and play sport, we'd be involved in teams. Um, we were always encouraged to, to be involved, whether it's in the A's, the B's, the C's, the E's, debating, whatever it might be, just be involved in, in school culture. When I started coaching, boys, what was instilled in me from a young man coming through with, the, with those values of mateship and fellowship and just trying your very best, whether or not we win or lose, it's just about the effort and trying to be you know, as accurate in the execution as possible. That's what we're always trying to, to do. And I've tried to, to do the same thing uh, to all the teams that I've coached as well. I and mean, also with my son coming through the school as well, so there's a reason why I chose for him to go to IGS. Like the GPS Association started in 1918. When I was here, it had been going for 30 odd years. And they offer this great opportunity to interact with other schools. The beauty of the GPS Association has been over the years to expand, to include more and more kids who didn't go in for the traditional sports, but now they have a reason to be a part of Terrace because they can play volleyball, they can play in the band, they can play chess. What education is about, it's not just about acquiring knowledge or learning, it's about the development of the whole person. One of the good things about the GPS Association is, is the opportunities it gives for team sports. And team sports are a great way for young people to learn, hey, it's not just about me, it's about us, it's inclusive. So much of life is just turning up. Turn up and be there, you know, a bit of polish and do your job. here in 1994 as a young 11-year-old, uh, left home straight into boarding here at TSS. I was involved in swimming, rowing, track and field and predominantly rugby. GPS for me is family. Playing against the GPS schools, you, you quickly develop friendships with those guys in other schools. When I had my accident in 2001, uh, fresh out of school, it's not easy going from Spending 18 years walking around to then one morning waking up, you wind up being paralysed from the chest down. Daniel and I met here at TSS at a first 15 game. I was coaching the under sixes who were playing the halftime match and we've been married now five years and he's just an inspiration. He gives everything a go and um, really inspires the boys around him. You've got two clear roads where you can either be miserable about it or you have courage or you pick yourself up and get on with it. Commitment for us is, is giving our kids an opportunity to set themselves up for life. So for us, there's, there is a bit of travel involved. It's just short of 400 k's each way. Not necessarily everything comes easily. Got to sometimes do some hard yards to get the rewards. And that's probably where satisfaction actually derives from, is actually putting in some hard yards. That might be working on studies, that might be working in a sporting commitment, that might be you know, working on relationship style of things there. And those hard yards, they see you, you know, develop and grow. And, and I think that's probably what you're trying to achieve in life, is the journey, not so much the end result.